diseases. I hope you are aware of the term non-communicable diseases because it term is what it is some important terms which you need to know which is for epidemiological transition. Right now uh, there is epidemiological transition in the type of disease. That is earlier there used to be higher amount of uh, Linear, uh, communicable diseases. Right now, we could uh, control most of the communicable diseases, and there is an increase in non communicable diseases. And we, as a developing nation, we have a dual burden of both communicable and non communicable diseases. Uh, rather, go with the highly, you know, highly developed countries, they have most burden of non communicable diseases only. For us, uh, it is a dual burden. We have both communicable and non communicable. Death present scenario is different. Every year throughout the world is suffering from communicable disease that is Corona. It is a communicable disease. So uh, just keep it apart because uh, pandemic may be transient. It might be for a six months or one year or one and a half year as a match or two years. After that again uh, the disease trend would be the same. That is communicable would be uh, more in developing nations and our developing nation we have your better of communicable and non-communicable diseases. So under non-communicable disease most important things we have Hypertension, coronary artery disease, stroke, uh, cancer, accident, accident is also considered under non communicable disease. This is a short chapter and very important chapter. Coming to both the chapters, communicable and non communicable, most of them uh, they, uh, they tend to skip for communicable disease because the chapter is very fast and you have many topics. And only to the, most of the ones for the very, very important topics, and rest of them they are trying to their own microbiology knowledge. Coming from the community, it is a very small chapter and very fine chapter. Better to read daily basis. So, hypertension cases, they are only used to specific cases. Apart from general information, there is general identification details, environment, user, and other details which are in common, all the cases. There are very particular questions which are very specific for this hypertension. So, it's very awkward to know these questions and you can answer it. These are very really important for you. In point of view also. So, hypertension is very important for theory and clinical point of view. But very, very important people will be getting hypertension or diabetes. So, you can know the questions which might be asked for you. Okay, coming to the important topics, apart from the general, general questions which might be asked for a keyword here is specific questions for hypertension would be what is the classification of blood pressure? What is the blood pressure measurement? How do, you, how do you measure the blood pressure in a person in an individual most commonly? And what is the classification for hypertension? What is the cutoff for normal? And when do you call it for us hypertension? And what is called as zola valves? And what is tracking of blood pressure? Risk factors for hypertension and prevention for hypertension. All these are uh, in the same manner given in your textbook. Go to your textbook. Rule of arms and tracking of blood pressure is the most common four mark question which is asked for you in your exam. And if you are getting hypertension case, these are the questions for you you will be asked. The rule of arms and tracking of blood pressure. Okay, rule of arms can also be affected for other non communicable diseases for diabetics also. In this, in this context, we will be in your textbook also. This has to discuss only with hypertension. Just go through the text to what is the pass and what is the of the pressure. Rest of the time, you can use your opinion. You can use your opinion. You have to see how many strikers are there and what might be possible for hypertension in this case. And how do you prevent hypertension? What is the best measure for prevention of hypertension? And what are the lifestyle modifications to manage hypertension? What is gas diet? Uh, how do you gas by BMI? And what is life for hypertension? And the last one is health program for hypertension. That is NPCDES. If you are aware of it, it is nothing but National Program for Control of Diabetes, Cancer, and Stroke. Cardiovascular diseases, uh, cancer, and stroke. Okay. Coming uh, to this case, we will see in this case. Uh, again, try to see the questions. These are the things which are asked. Part of the common terminology, that is, 
for around know, 3 to 4 days, if it is not getting the review, it is advised to close friends. I uh, might not be any doctor, it might be any educated person, any engineer or any, any other education. Everybody, he might be taking a second advice from his close A review or some other person. And if he was not getting reviewed, then he goes to uh, in, in case of rural setup or people uh, tend to go into the RFP, he goes to Dr. Bandit, he might be going to a RFP, that is student uh, registered medical practitioner or a quack. And whenever he is not decreasing at last, he might be coming on to our uh, journey of a MBBS doctor or any CD. So this this trend occurs most of us. Uh, most of your family members also, if you do the they are having their health all of the day. I have fever for me and this lady that is my decrease by itself. They all of us might be saying that I have been using some Ayurvedic medicines, I have been doing uh, local Ayurvedic medications. Right now I have also you see people are taking that. I am taking steam in a little bit, I am doing some other gym in a little bit, or I am doing a few weeks, so nothing will happen to me, I will have a very good beauty. Or they might be saying that uh, the uh, image might be decreased by itself for me, I am very own, it will come and go, it is not in the case. So I think behavior is very, very important, attitude of the patient, which you can ask them. So in this case also it was said. He is having headache and blurring conditions since more than a month, and he is visiting RMP only after three weeks. That is, one week back, he went to an RMP and an RMP. Before he did uh, blood pressure sugar event, he gave some treatment for his headache, it was a sugar. BB, he has he noted it as high BB, and he uh, gave some medication. After that, so he, he referred to a Tertiary center, that is, which is nearby to our college, so he gave it nearby to our college hospital, so he referred it to our hospital. So, try to come, try to come and assess how, how the patient is ending up in a hospital, especially in non-emergency cases. Emergency cases, it might go directly to an emergency clinic in a tertiary hospital, in a major entry, in a private or government or medical college. But small things like headache, bloody vision, or vomiting, or dizziness, they go to a three doctors and at last end up to be a specialist. And some some other things, well, right now what's happening in our corporation is patient goes to he goes to his corporate hospital, he shells up all the amount of money which he has, after all the money which he, he has exhausted to pay, then when he is left with no money to spend in a government hospital, he goes to a private medical college or to a government medical college. You can inquire about people sometimes uh, because this, this, this I have to experience myself. You know, people they go to a corporate hospital, they get treated for you know, one month, two months, when they are not there, they end up in our something like our medical college or private medical college or tertiary medical center. So I try to see the Chronology, what, what happened, which symptom happened, how he is going, when he is turning up, activate in the hospital. So, coming to past history, he has no history of, no history of prolonged headache or bearing of fever in the past. He is a known case of hypertension since 10 years. So, we know that he has hypertension since 10 years. Hypertension was first diagnosed 10 years back at a local lab before organized in his village. And since then, he has been taking medications for the same irregularity. Because he is, uh, he is lending money right now, he is taking his share money, he used to buy it and they procure the medications right now. As he is not lending the money, he is dependent on his son for money to buy medications. He is taking these medications very regularly. Whenever his son is doing money for to take the medicines, he buys them. Otherwise, he is not taking the medications. So, he is very. He affected a thing with socioeconomic, why he did socioeconomic status and what are the implications. When they are not affordable, they don't, they don't tend to give money on these things, spend money on these things. So coming to family history, there is no family history of diabetes, hypertension, chronic heart, heart disease, cancer or any other disease in the family. They don't know which, uh, which uh, because they, they are illiterate and they are not aware that any of their elders are having or suffering from any of these conditions. So we, we just write it out that no history is present. Actually, we don't know earlier. Because most of the seniors, when you talk to the elderly person, we don't know how the parent or grandparent, uh, elderly people or his 
Kazir Sahar died. He was saying about 10 to 6 health advice earlier. They just say in their family and die on spot. So, coming to personal history, the mixer died, normal carbonate, normal sleep, normal ball and diet habits of seeing the person. Psychosocial problems coming to this condition, he just motors his very finest. He takes around 5 beers per day, every day. So, he, he consumes beer, he smokes beer, every year he is beer, he used to consume, he used to smoke beer, a lot, like you know, 10 to 15 per day, right now he takes to 5 beers per day. And uh, he consumes toddy occasionally. So, coming to these, these are very important risk factors which tend to increase the hypertension in your family. So, smoking and alcohol consumption is one of the most important age. These are the three factors which we have in this study in this person. That is, age, issue is elderly male, smokers, and alcohol. Alcoholic, these are the risk factors. So, again, coming to the next thing, that is general examination. It's very big and well nourished. Height is 156 centimeters, weight 70 kg, and BMI. BMI is very, very important for non communicable diseases, especially for the average we can get BMI. BMI is nothing but uh, weight by meter, weight by height square, that is kilogram by meter square, you make weight changes by height in meters. So when you have when you meters, it will be 1.56 meters. Height of the person will be 1.56 meters. So the BMI is 28.7 kilogram per meter square. So again, it is overweight. Basically, we discuss what is BMI and application of BMI in quality. So, BMI more than 25, which is called BMI, is nothing but overweight. Overweight is nothing but again, criteria for uh, high the risk factor for uh, hypertension. So, its temperature is 75 pounds, 100 per million, that is, tachycardia is there, respiratory is 21 million, it's normal, and temperature is 100 by 90 mm of HD. Still a bit, uh, a bit higher end, uh, not normal, but it is a bit controlled. To see this control. So coming to systemic examination, just go through systemic examination where experience <laughs> system is normal, uh, lungs are bilaterally here, no and no other the CVS known as disorder, no mothers are seen in this person, and CNS for abnormality indicator and GS system is also normal. Everything is fine. So coming to particular things which are not given, which are complete composite to be noted is environment. That is environment that is they have a, they, they live in their own house, which is Paka house. There are two rooms and two there are two rooms out of it, there are two rooms, both are living rooms only. The overcoming is rather there is no supplementation. Uh, there is no supplementation. They are in one of the room itself. They will be moving in the corner of the same room and they will be sleeping in the same room. So again, you will be asked, what, what, what are the implications when there is no supplementation? Uh, the most important thing is there might be the air pollution due to the And again, next we need to see when there is no supplementation, what is the type of fuel we use for Okay, and in this area, uh, it's good to see that they use LP, they have an LPG connection, they put LPG gas within their home, and they also use firewood outside their home. In their compound itself, they have firewood also, they would be using firewood to cook sometimes, and also to heat water and some other extra cultural things, they would be using firewood also within their house. So, I think overloading is present because in two homes, why people are staying? Again, you need to have an idea that is very critical, which we have discussed. First answer is what is what are the criteria for overcrowding? There are three criteria that is person, number of persons, number of persons, number of persons per square feet, and gender, not basic on gender. These are three things we need to go to it, which is mentioned clearly in your textbook or the chapter of sociology. Okay? So, are we coming to the thing? Root and root, loads and loads of symmetry. For years, there are two doors and two windows for the house and adequate ventilation is correct for the family. For the house. So, lighting is adequate and artificial lighting is also there. That is, they are very easy to spread, separate, and it is by separate. Solid waste is by open disposal, they usually do in different disposal just outside their house. They just throw the disposal, they just throw solid waste just outside their house or dump it around their house. 
So any most important thing is water supply. Water supply they have a tap water supply that is gram panchayat, those are municipality, gram panchayat, tap water, and they fill tap water. I come to drinking water day to day. They purify the tap water and uh, the candle uh, filter. Again, this is very important because coming to tap water, water uh, environment chapter is going on. Water is done for you. I hope. I, I, no, I am not hope. It is done for you. So coming to the important thing. Small scale purification of water, which is very important to remember. What are the various methods of purification of water on small scale or at domestic level? It might be as well. Whether small scale or domestic level or at home. So most probably they would be doing, they would try to, they would be drinking direct tap water or they would be boiling water, boiling the water and storing them or they would be using candle filters. Uh, there are again two types of candle filters to which you can go to the school. And right now, which you what we can see is other types of filters. It is gravity filters, purity, and all of them. And the most important thing, which is most common in your house, might be all of it. That is reverse osmosis. With ultraviolet uh, purification, or one and TV, there are three different types of filters, which are mostly seen. So, depending on the meaning of the filter, they are putting in carrying filters. So, carrying filters, which are used for in their homes. So, there are no pictures in the house. Area surrounding house is untidy and mosquito and nuisance is spread uh, around the house and the dead house. So, you can commit nutrition, you need to take complete diet of the family. Right now, we are not using complete diet, but whenever we take a diet of the person, we need to uh, do it by 24 hour recall better. There is a previous day whenever he is normal, there is whenever he is not admitted uh, in your office, you need to see what he is. Consume daily on a daily basis and an average on a daily basis, apart from Sunday. So, here the person is under sedentary pain because he is not doing his occupation, farming, so his consumption will be demand. So, what consumption is the required calories would be 2400 kilocalories which are required. So, total calories which is consumed on an average as we calculated would be 800 calories. So, 600 calories deficient is seen as joint. So, again, we need to say, if there is any, so much amount of calories are there, deficit calories are there, so is the person mean or normal? In this place, the person is overweight and also his calories are deficit. So there might be any other problem might be incurring in this in this person. So we need to do in-depth analysis. But right now it would be more than uh, nutrition and uh, health seeking with a EPA. So what is the Nutrition and then advice. So, advice uh, treatment, treatment right now he is on uh, two antihypertensive drugs and also he is given on aspirin. So, investigations for hypertension, just you do uh, all the time diagnosis, you do, uh, you do, you check the blood pressure and also you uh, sometimes uh, regular blood pressure, regular blood examination is done, urine examination is done. And elderly patient you do your PSD and serum urea levels are also being measured for this person. Yes, uh, again, treatment uh, antihypertensive drugs and antibiotics, mild antibiotics are being prescribed. We will diagnose with having hypertension with uh, uh, sorry. Sorry, oh. Senile cataract, it is senile cataract. As he is having a blood information, it is diagnosed as having senile cataract. So, he is being advised right now hypertension medication and when the hypertension is controlled, he is referred to, he was referred to uh, ophthalmology and say he would be operated for cataract. So, in senile cataract and cataract operation must be done. So, advice for this patient, whenever I need to advise for this patient, you need to see what are the high risk factors and you control the high risk factors. And apart from this, when you have diet advice and uh, dietary modifications, which must be advised, and we uh, will discuss all the advice in that end, okay? So, coming to the discussion part, so how do you classify blood pressure? So, normal blood pressure would be less than 120 by 80. So, I think you are all aware what is historic and diastolic blood pressure because I see people sometimes they might be confused what is historic and what is diastolic. So normal blood pressure is nothing but more than uh, less than 120 by less than or historic by diastolic blood pressure that is millimeters of HC mercury. Pre-hypertension is 120 to 130 by 80 by 90, 80 to 90 mm of HC 
and hypersensitive stage one is more than 1.13 by 92 by 99 degrees. Stage one and stage two more than 160 by more than 100 diastolic BP. So in default, whenever you want to classify a person as hypertension, you say more than 140 by more than 90. 140 by 90 mm of AC. So basically, if you are not answering anything, the least question would be answering when do you ask a person as hypertension? Hypertension. So uh, I am coming back to the hypertension. One of the important things we need to tell know is whether you come across a patient classified as hypertension or not, hypertension or not, you just not be. It is not based on the measurement, of, uh, solely based on the measurement. First, you need to ask the patient, is there no case of hypertension on medication or not? Because whenever you come into the patient, if he is a known case and he is on medication which is very, very controlled, his default, uh, default is a hypertension patient. Uh, so if you don't have a patient and if you measure the BP of the uh, person on medication, it might be normal. So, if the person is diagnosed hypertension and controlled, or his BP is more than 140 by 100, 140 by 90, you term is as a hypertension person. So, blood pressure measurement, again, is one of the three most common errors in the uh, measurement of blood pressure, that is, observer error, instrumental error, subject error, observer error, which, uh, which, is, which is done by a person who is taking the blood pressure, who is taking the blood pressure. Uh, more commonly, the clinics, you uh, you yourself take a blood pressure or in a bigger centers, uh, the nurse who is, uh, who is there uh, adjacent to you, she might be taking the blood pressure and sending the patient to you. Just don't be here. So only depend on the observation of the nurse because she might be very wrong. Her observation might not be very well. So to rule out, you must be having good eyesight, you must be having good ears. Uh, hearing capacity, so observer error can be reduced. Instrumental error, instrument again, there are there, you know, if the instrument is not working properly, there might be instrumental error. And subject uh, subjective error, subjective error might be again, if the, if the subject who is who is the other person, the patient, uh, he might be in, uh, not sitting in a proper position, or he, he might be sitting with the cross legs. Or he might be coming to the table, walking very fast and coming and just showing up, tending to show up to you uh, immediately while after walking. And there's something called right foot hypertension that is, whenever a person sees a few other persons, whenever they come across this, uh, uh, across you, there is a healthcare person or doctor, immediately they might be taking the right rise up, which is nothing but right for hypertension that is, seeing a doctor, uh, few of the persons' hypertension increases by around 10 to 20 mm of HC. So, whenever you are taking a blood pressure, uh, see that today the person is in sitting posture uh, and in your, in your clinic or in a, in a company, in a setup, I will take a left arm or head on all the patients. It might be anything. If you are seeing left arm, make it uh, left arm every patient and right arm for every patient. So, if you make a uniform thing for yourself and so, coming to the sound, pressure, every the first sound is heard, you take the systolic and the pressure, whether sounds disappear, you take it as diastolic. Some people, if they take the diastolic sound when the muffling, that is, the sounds uh, decrease in amount of but most of them, they take it as when the sounds disappear, they, they take it as diastolic. So, ideally, it must be measured at least three times over a period of at least three minutes, and the notes the recording or out of the three must be taken. So the blood pressure must not be recorded immediately when the patient arrives. It must be made to sit minimum of 15 minutes in your clinic, and then you take the blood pressure of the person. Should be the ideal method of blood pressure measurement. So classification of hypertension, as we discussed, hypertension the person with no no history of hypertension or not on hypertension medication or when the recording of the person for the first time is more than 145 and we consider this as a mass hypertension and coming to classification of hypertension which is only two different types that is primary or essential hypertension which is the most common type and the part of which is unknown more than 90 percent of the cases is essential hypertension and we exactly don't know the cause what is the reason behind the cause of hypertension so it is called essential hypertension and the second most important thing is secondary hypertension. It might be due to any underlying diseases that is uh, kidney diseases, chronic kidney disease, any uh, 
not modifiable and modifiable misfires which are important as the age increases. Not modifiable includes age as the age increases. The hypertension increases uh, more and more people become hypertensive. If the arteries might be getting elasticity of the arteries or the blood vessels might be decreased and ultimately the high pressure can happen. That might be one of the possible cause. And sex coming to sex uh, in the elderly males, uh, there is in the elderly adult life, most of the males might be having hypertension compared to females. But as the females in the uh, coming to over 50 years, when the uh, female attains menopause, uh, the, the age sex ratio would be equal. That is, male and female would be having the same number of cases after 50, 50 or 55 years. That is, after the menopause. Um, uh, almost might be predicted by uh, for female at 45 years uh, uh, for control of blood pressure. So it is one of the hypothesis. So coming to genetic factors, genetic factors, it might be running in family, if there is family history of um, hypertension, you, you must be very much aware and you must be the person. So in this case, the person is 60 years, 60 years old, female, male person, he is having hypertension. So uh, you know, we, we need to see is Children. So he is having only one son and he is 35 years old, 38 years old. Son. So, right now, whenever you are given advice, you need to see all these things. So, family advice and advice to the person and advice to the family humans, screen his son. So, he also uh, he has hypertension, his family here, he also might get hypertension. So, coming to the studies we were done earlier, if the both parents are not hypertensive, diagnosis is Confirming we know both the parents are not hypertension, then the son, then the child, like very, uh, the chance of child having hypertension be only 5%. And if both the parents are hypertension, then the child or the person, uh, then their uh, kid might have uh, hypertension, is 45 percent chance that he might have hypertension. So, in this case, uh, the person is a hypertension and the uh, mother is hyperdiabetic. So, when you are coming to the family, so the definition we are taking the family question. So, when we get high risk of hypertension and diabetes, so we must be very sure that we must screen him because 35, after 30, 30 35 years, we must screen each and every person with high risk factors for hypertension and diabetes. So, so the son is high risk factor, high risk for. Both hypertension and diabetes, we need to screen him and uh, right now at uh, this point it's in the hospital. Because next time he might never sign up to the hospital for these things. Because people think that I am very healthy and nothing happens to me. That's the uh, worst most one now. And we never know when the disease um, has uh, started in your body, when the when the, when the, when the, when the, when the person has diabetes or when the when was it, uh, when was the body he has uh, Hypertension has started in the person. So, we don't know the first initial things what will happen when was the hypertension vaccine, how long is he having hypertension. It's only basic on when was it diagnosed. So, coming to ethnicity, ethnicity also it is more common in some ethnic groups, some to African and dark colored people, it is more hypertension is more compared to dark colored people than white people. There, is, there are some studies which are done. Also. Okay, so, uh, next important thing. So, how modify the risk factors? You want to modify these things. So, ultimately, once the age, uh, age is increased, you will get to have, uh, you might have the, you might, I mean, you might be hypertension, or if there is possible damage, they might be hypertension. So, something very important is modify for this factor, that means you can modify the area, all the risk factors in the person, you can ask them to modify or control it. So, what are the modified risk factors? That is obesity, salt intake, that is higher amount of obesity. Again, the aspiration of obesity is basic on BMI, which we discuss in coming slides, and salt intake. What is the salt intake? So, normal salt intake must be 5 grams per person per day. That is around ABC, it would be a normal teaspoon, a teaspoon per amount of salt per person per day. And saturated fat intake must be reduced. Diet and cover in the uh, must be increased. It is protective. Alcohol consumption must be minimized and it might be uh, under control and hot heart rate. When you study the issue of heart rate, also has an effect. Higher the heart rate, the person might have been, the person might have hypertension and physical activity. 
physical no zero or no physical activity but this physical activity also tends to indirectly affect the obesity uh, indirectly cause obesity and it are hypertension mind setup so physical activity to under the stress which is the most important factor which might also cause a bit hypertension lot of people many of the people working and not working uh, are having physical and stress physical stress might be in the family or mental stress again with the uh, social economic burden he might be having right now uh, due to this lockdown many people are having economic crisis and due to this they are having mental stress and which might be lead to new kind of hypertension also so you need to see all the risk factors when you are taking it uh case of hypertension and diabetes you need to have uh, a broad idea of what are the risk factors in your mind and based on that you need to give your advice so coming to prevention of hypertension how do you prevent prevention is basically your two methods which is primary prevention and secondary prevention primary prevention is nothing but we is on two charges so uh, uh, there are two strategies to for primary prevention that is population strategy and high risk strategy There is population study in the country, but it is which is done with large population. So, for all the population, what salary can be applied? So, we can address for all the population to reduce the salt intake. So, salt, coming to salt, salt is salt is nothing but sodium chloride. Sodium is one of the important risk factors for increasing blood pressure and potassium is potassium. So, population study, other population study, you can ask people to. Control or decrease the amount of salt intake and increase their physical activity so that they might, they might be physically active and reduce stress management by doing yoga or some other uh, meditation and all things. So this is a population study. They can advocate to work and they can also work on population control. If there is a high intake of BP in all the population, the case might be reduced drastically, will be reduced drastically, and the burden on the health worker also will be reduced. So coming to high risk strategy, second one high risk strategy is nothing but again second thing that is only high risk people. So people with family history of uh, hypertension or some other secondary causes, only these people would be taken screen and intervention might be done only to these people with risk factors. So that is nothing but high risk people, high risk health. So secondary prevention, secondary prevention, other secondary prevention is yeah doing things that is. Endocrine detection, endocrine detection is nothing but uh, identify the case as early as possible. How? Oh, it can be done with periodical examination. Periodically, you need to check the blood pressure of people. Uh, for people more than thirty years, once a year it can be done. Or people more than fifty years, every month or every three months they can check their blood pressure. If it is normal or if it is if they are being if they are on treatment, if whether this treatment compliance is there or not, whether the whether the drug is appropriate to them or not. I think this is going to be treatment. Treatment they must be uh, prescribed appropriate anti-hypertension. Most commonly, we use uh, ACE inhibitors and calcium channel blockers and uh, uh, other beta blockers might be we use most commonly. Again, they might be used in combination also or in single or there are few other sorts of which are used for treatment. Again, patient compliance is very much important thing because. Uh, hypertension is a chronic, uh, chronic uh, disease. Once it sets up, it, uh, the, the treatment will be throughout lifelong. And you need to advise or you need to educate the person on the importance of uh, taking the medication and controlling his BP. The patient confidence is very important. In this case, there was no confidence of medication and it was irregular. So this is a very important point you need to keep in your mind. So again, the important thing with hypertension and diabetes is uh, once the patient is uh, One drug, he will be on the on the second drug for few years, like five or six years, six years. For example, a patient is on uh, uh, captopril or uh, I don't know, I don't know what will be able. He might be controlling his baby for around uh, five to six months. Sorry, five to six years. So for five to six years, it might not be sufficient. You might increase the dosage. That is, he might be on the turning up to retinol at ten for ten g. And after two to three years, he may not be maintaining his BP on the higher amount of higher dosage of drugs. Also, next you need to again change the more modification. That that is you need to again by use combination of drugs. That is adrenal or another calcium channel blockers or some other things. So, and it is a lifelong medication as uh, age progresses. 
the, the combination changes depending if the person is having um, background uh, diabetes, uh, the drug combination would be different if he is having uh, kidney disease, the drug would be the uh, combination of drug would be different. So, uh, treatment would be person specific. So, it must be person specific and he must take the drug throughout his life. So, coming to lifestyle modification, which must be addressed by a patient to manage the condition. That is, weight detection, weight must be between the BMI, that is, less than 25, and diet, dance diet must be appropriated. That is, they have to remember dietary approaches to stop hypertension, which we discussed, and dietary uh, sodium restriction, that is, salt intake must be reduced, and potassium intake must be, be can be used, that is, banana, which is higher than the potassium, some other foods also have potassium, higher than one of potassium, they can be advocated and physical activity. Coming to physical activity, you have half in care, you have to do as well as a physical activity, you have to do as well for minimum five days. That is, minimum, uh, in this book, is here, and then most of the days, it must be minimum 30 days. So, at least, minimum five days a day, we must be having minimum 30 days of physical activity. So, once he starts working, he must continue to do walking or exercise or running or, or skipping or jogging, whatever it is, as per his age, otherwise must be as per the first day. Physical activity must be minimum of 30 minutes at a stretch. And modernization of alcohol consumption is also very important thing uh, in a, for lifestyle modification. Coming to dash diet, dash diet is nothing but dietary approaches to stop hypertension. In this, uh, in this approaches you uh, 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 you must address to consume a diet which is fruits and vegetables and low fat dairy products must be consumed. Diet which is fruits and vegetables, low no fat dairy, dairy products and will reduce the percent of saturated fat and cholesterol fat. So, cholesterol and total saturated fat must be controlled. So, this will be adapted for healthy blood pressure. This is a just broad diagram. That is, foods, vegetables, and grains must be taken in most amount and lean protein. That is, fish and meat, fish and meat must be taken to a very less amount and low fat dairy day. That is, food must be consumed. And fine fats, saturated fats must be reduced to maximum extent. Okay? So this is nothing but dash diet. Dash diet is very important. It is very, very, very short given in your textbook. It might not be. Uh, it is given in the physical activities in the table. You can just see dash diet. It is very uh, inappropriate on you can't find it directly in the textbook, but it is very important. Very dietary approaches to stop hypertension. That is, you need to have higher amount of fruit, vegetables, then you can uh lean protein must be taken here, lesser amount of saturated fats must be restricted. So, coming to BMI, BMI categories again, uh, this is not, uh, this BMI, this is which we are discussing right now, is a global standard, there is some other criteria called Asian standard of BMI, which we will be discussing here, diabetes. So, in diabetes, when we are discussing diabetes, we will see both the standards. Uh, this, uh, this is the minimum criteria that is global standard of BMI, is the which you need to have an idea, but if you know Asian standard, it is well active. So, we will discuss it in the next class. So, healthy weight or normal weight is nothing but BMI of 8.5 to 25 or 24.9 to be appropriate. And less than 18.5 is called underweight. And 25 to 29.9 is called overweight. Less than 30 is called obesity. 30 to 39 is called more than 30 is called obesity. Severe obesity, limit apart, we might not require, but these four things here. Normal weight, underweight, overweight, and obesity is very important. So, our case, we have the, the our patient is 28, 28.6 or something, his BMI was, so he was overweight. So, we need to ask him to reduce his weight. So, appropriate should be for weight reduction in the physical activity. So, what are the general health programs for this, uh, for this hypertension? The only program is NPCS, National Program for Control of Diabetes, uh, Cancer, Diabetes, Cardiovascular Disease, and, and Sport. Under this program, again, there are two substances that is cancer, cancer and serious, that is uh, cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, and so on. Uh, cancer, uh, uh, cancer is one of the separate components. Under this component, people are uh, health workers are screening people for uh, hypertension, both in uh, urban slums and rural areas. And under this program, free medications are being provided. In the primary health centers or in community health centers. So, the patient, it is not affordable for the patient. He can at least go and procure the medications free of cost in this health center, any nearby health centers. 
Rajasthan subsector uh, also procuring uh, the hypertension medication. So they will be having the basic hypertension medication. So coming to advice, we, we need to advise the patient for uh, drug combination, that is, uh, uh, medication, that is, treatment combination, that is, you must take medications daily, and you must know the complications of diabetes, in the, sorry, hypertension. When the hypertension is not controlled, it might lead to stroke, cardiovascular disease, MI or stroke, and again, uh, eye problems, hypertension, and diabetes might also occur, and ultimately, uh, organ damage, end organ damage, kidneys might be damaged, and neural problems might also occur. Once you get a patient on the combination of the uh, hypertension, then he might be somewhere uh, aware that uh, if he make him hear of stroke, he might be in caution and he might take his medication. So, patient, uh, you must educate the patient on complications of the hypertension. You need to pay, ask him to regularly monitor his hypertension at least one every month and his combination of is very important. Individual and again dietary advice, you need to uh, ask him to reduce his weight. He can reduce his weight by increasing his physical activity, doing yoga, doing meditation. Again, his stress can be reduced. Again, he's having high risk factors like this morning and alcohol uh, uh, You need to ask him to uh, continue smoking. You, need, you just have to ask him person to stop smoking once and all. And that is just for a person more in it would be very hard. So smoking must be reduced drastically. So if he is smoking five minutes per day, you need to ask him to sleep to and when an alimentary stop is smoking. So smoking is one of the important factors which can be asked for this person. So as a person, individual point of view, control all the risk factors, take medications regularly and take for any other complications which are which is advice to this person. And advice to the family or advice to the family or again. Uh, the female, uh, his wife is having diabetes, she must also regularly monitor her blood uh, sugar levels and take medications regularly. And the son, son must be uh, screened from both hypertension and diabetes, both because there are risk factors in the family. Uh, and, uh, and he must also take physical activity, that is, right? he must say, he must say, he must right now start having physical activity and he must control his BMI and weight. So these are the basic things, minimum things which we which must be kept in mind. So NP series CS also is an important essay question. So we'll go through the topic NP series CS, what is joint name, which level. Okay. So that's uh, enough for today. We'll close this session and we'll go with the next class. Okay. Thank you.